All right, if you've got a tractor, you also have a grease gun, and if you don't, you need to get one because greasing your tractor, your loader, your backhoe, your implements is one of the most essential things you need to do to keep them running well. Uh, today I'm talking about greasing, talking about why you grease, talking about what kind of grease you should use on your tractor. There's a lot of debate. I'm going to clear that up on what kind of grease to use, how often to grease. Let's get into it. This is a pin, this is a greasable pin. This is like what's going through the loader uh, right here. So on the end of it is a grease zerk and uh, your grease tip of some sort attaches to your grease zerk, which pushes down a, a ball in the end of the grease zerk. And as grease goes through the grease gun, through the grease tip and into the grease zerk, it pushes that ball in and allows grease to come through this pin. Now there's other ways grease gets delivered on your tractor, but this is just one example. So we start greasing and grease comes shooting out of a hole in this pin, which then distributes the grease through this joint. So it'll keep these two parts of this loader lubricated by way of this pin that ends up being covered in grease. Well, uh, None of that audio recorded. That's kind of frustrating. And yes, this is just a prop. I wasn't actually looking at the video on this laptop. Don't, don't judge me. All right, let's uh, record it again. So why are we greasing things in the first place? Now, the most obvious reason is that uh, this pin, for example, goes inside something made of metal and there's rotation that happens around this pin. Don't get too excited, boys. Some rotation happens around this pin. The uh, lubrication prevents friction. Friction, which leads to heat, which leads to metal seizing together, and uh, well, it leads to all sorts of problems, like the metal being worn away. So we want to avoid friction. Grease helps prevent friction. Grease also does a few other things. Um, grease can prevent water intrusion. It causes a seal that water just can't get through. Um, and that can help us prevent corrosion. Some types of grease even have anti-corrosive properties. And then the grease, by sealing that enclosed area that's being greased, um, can also you know, keep away rocks and sand and debris. But it can also trap rocks and sand and debris. So um, yeah, it's something to think about, you know, consider, consider that sometimes. You know, should I clean the grease off of where it's at or should I leave it on to protect it? That's something for you to decide. Okay, so let's talk about the great grease debate. What kind of grease should you be using on your tractor, on your implements? Should you be using different kinds of grease on different things? No, I think we can just get away with one. Lots of grease on the market. So this is Valvoline Crimson. Um, this is a Stay Lube Molly Graph. Uh, this is a uh, Lucas Red and Tacky, really popular. Um, so mainly people will ask about two kinds of grease. There's many kinds, but two kinds. Uh, one being a uh, lithium grease and one being a molly grease. Uh, molly is, um, I think it's called mollybendium dioxate. It doesn't matter what it's called, okay? Um, that is like the main greasing ingredient in here. Um, these guys, these are both a lithium grease. So what is the difference? Um, the difference is in what they do. So a molly grease is really good for high pressure applications. So things where things are squeezing really hard against each other. So you'd say, okay, that would be good on a backhoe, which yes, it could be. Um, it's not as good in wet conditions. Molly will wash away a little easier than lithium in wet conditions. And if you're using your tractor outside, it's probably gonna be pretty wet. Uh, Molly really excels in high heat applications. 400 degrees plus, this thing will stay thick and tacky and, and uh, stinking uh, keep doing its greasy stuff. So if you're greasing something that's gonna get really hot, 400 degrees, um, or is near really high heat, Molly's kind of the way to go. Um, that being said, I think lithium grease is just the best choice for a tractor. 
So lithium grease, the properties of this are, it's better at dealing with water. Um, it's also better at dealing with spinning. So if something spins really fast, the lithium tends to fly out less. So you'll see this used on wheel bearings a lot. You open up a wheel bearing and it's got probably got lithium grease in it. So water resistance, spinning resistance, if we're using this on our PTO shaft, that's where this is gonna come in handy. You have a little less squish out resistance than you do with the Molly grease, but you're gonna be greasing all the time anyway by the lithium, which is gonna have better water resistance and better spinning resistance. And then you just need one kind of grease to deal with all your stuff. Now, how about color? When you open up these tubes, there's different colors of the grease. This one's red. Lucas red and tacky. Normally a lithium grease was white, but now they've added additives to them. So like this Lucas, I really kind of recommend this stuff. Um, it is lithium, but it has that Molly additive in it. So it kind of tries to be the best of both worlds. Uh, this one is eh, kind of a pinkish red. And this Molly graph, you know, this is black. Does the color matter? No, the color doesn't matter. Just what's in the, the, the grease matters. And how do you tell what's in the grease? Because a lot of these don't say what's in them. So what we're looking for is basically what's on the ingredient list. And some of them don't even really say on the ingredient list what's in them. This one just says multi-purpose grease with anti-seize with a 540 degree drop point, but red and tacky. It says right here is a high quality lithium complex grease. It's a lithium grease that still deals with high heat. Okay, cool. Uh, this one says nowhere on it where it is until you look at the ingredients. So it's kind of like going to the grocery store. You should read your ingredients. It'll freak you out a little bit. Um, and again, this one is a, a lithium grease. So look on the side panel. Um, you'll also see if you're actually reading your owner's manual, which nobody does, that they all say to use an NLGI number two. That's a grading from the National Grease Association or something. So NLGI two, that's most greases that you find. So go ahead and get some lithium grease. Um, uh, Lucas Red and Tacky seems to work in most applications. Now, how often should you be greasing? Um, sometimes this is hotly debated, and, and I don't know why, because it's pretty straightforward. Read your owner's manual, that's how often. But in general, tractor stuff, like the front end on this tractor, this tractor has some grease points on the front end. So we're gonna be lubricating those or greasing those every, t uh, every 50 hours. The loader, these pins right here, everywhere there's a rotation point, that's every 10 hours of loader use. Now on this loader, there's a lot of moving parts and there's, there's grease pins here, pins to grease. Uh, there's a quick connect. Some of these are greasable. There's a little grease circuit, you grease them up because there's a plate here that can like seize up because it's supposed to move. I don't grease those plates because they'll trap rocks and dirt really bad and I've had these get just absolutely stuck. I hit these with WD-40. It seems to be sufficient. The pin down here that kind of goes through the, uh, the QA securement point down here, a lot, a lot of guys will grease those. I don't, I've had rocks again get lodged in these things because the grease trapped the rocks and it seized them. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Do you grease it or do you not? Again, I hit them with WD and I move them around a lot it seems to keep them from getting wrecked. Maybe I should grease them. That one you're gonna have to experiment with. How about your backhoe? A backhoe, you're gonna, you're gonna grease these components every 10 hours of use. Um, so again, these are just pins floating in grease that are connecting these joints together. So if we wanna prevent these joints from seizing up, we've gotta grease them. Every 10 hours of backhoe use, you should be greasing. If not more, the extreme pressures from using your backhoe will squeeze grease out everywhere. So eventually you'll lose that grease and extreme pressure breaks down the stuff that grease is made out of. It'll actually break the molecules apart. That's not good. We want grease to stay greasy, not turn into sticky goo that does nothing or glue in, in a worst case. Um, stuff like this post hole digger, there's a shaft on there. Those need to be greased every 10 hours. Brush cutter, usually it's just the PTO shaft that you grease every 10 hours. So this PTO shaft right here, where this U-joint is, 
that's a grease point. You need to grease that because this thing's moving in funny directions and it needs to stay lubricated so it can move. We see a lot of these seized up. And then also you can pull this, here, let's do this one. You can pull these shafts apart. See that? This shaft slides over this inner shaft. And you see how I've got some grease on there? You need to grease these as well. Um, now this is where some pros and cons come in. Um, that grease can, like I said, trap dirt and rocks, but these are a tight enough connection between the inner and outer shaft. They barely even want to slide over each other as it is that putting grease on there um, isn't going to hurt them. So usually you would, you would grease the tip of this thing right here. This is the, we call this the male and it'll slide into this female here. Just, just stop. Okay. This is a serious video. Stop. Greasing it, even though, you know, you get some dirt in there, it's better than having dry dirt in there. At least it's greasy dirt that'll keep the thing moving. But about every 10 hours on your PTO shafts, um, stuff like, yes, here's another grease point here on that U-joint. Uh, on the side of this, this says to grease every 20 hours. But you may as well just grease it every 10 hours because you should be greasing that every 10 hours. Think about every use or every other use, just go out and grease your, uh, your, uh, your implement. That's a good way to think about it. So how much grease do these grease zerks need? How much grease do these grease pins need? And the answer is you grease them until they're done being greased. Um, a lot of people have different opinions on it. Some people say just one or two squirts in each one. That's probably fine. These grease pins and grease zerks are feeling blessed to even get any grease in them, I'm here to tell you. But for me, I grease until I hear a pop, a couple crackling sounds, that's usually pretty good. What, what I'll notice is when I'm greasing, some grease will come out of the joint. That's not a big deal. Um, there's no bushings in here, or any rubber things that you're blowing out. You're just filling this area with grease. So the more the merrier, as far as I'm concerned, I may over grease, but I'm never gonna under grease, I'll say that. Um, so sometimes you'll notice when you're greasing, um, some grease will start coming out of the joint and it'll be pushing out water. That's good. We don't want it, want water in here. So I just kind of grease till I hear some snap, crackle and pop. I see some grease coming out. There's some right there. And then I figure, you know what, that's, that's probably good enough. There is grease everywhere right now. It just it like breeds. I don't, I don't know what happens, but this camera and me and everything is just covered in grease right now. Get, get some stinking rubber gloves. Holy.